Hello, this is a video lecture on VLSI testing and testability and today's topic is second part of BIST built in self test. In the last tutorial, we discussed the following topics. First one is the introduction to BIST. So what is built in self test and what is a typical block diagram of BIST. So in which we saw that there are three blocks first block is test vector generator second one second block is circuit under test and third block is output analysis in that we selected first the test pattern generator in that we discussed different types of test generator there are four types in that we concentrated on exhaustive test generator and pseudo exhaustive test generator in exhaustive test generator where you will generate all the possible test vector if circuit has n input then you will generate 2 power n vectors however it is not feasible if n is a large number next technique was pseudo exhaustive test generator in that in a first example we divided the whole circuit into two and we added two additional OR gates and we reduced total number of test vector though we are able to conduct pseudo exhaustive testing and second example was uh, this is this is second example so there are three input and multi output two outputs and we wrote first a dependence matrix that is x and y are the output and column variable nothing but the inputs when an output is a function of input we will write 1 else 0 so since x is a function of a b we wrote a b 1 1 c 0 similarly y is a function of only b and c so 0 1 1 then we divided this matrix into 2 such that in each partition any row if you take the total number of ones should not exceed one so we have two partition and first row total number of ones is one correct second one is also one first partition second row zero one total number of ones is less than or equal to one and in second partition also same then we ord within the partition we ord the columns belonging to the same partition so a and c if you or you will get 1 or 0 1 0 1 or 1 and 1 1 and we have two values p and w p is number of partition and w is maximum number of ones in any row we have two rows here in that each row consists of two ones so maximum number of ones is two then based on p and w value we can have different cases where p is the number of partition w is the maximum number of ones in any row if p equal to w that is in the previous case p equal to w then test vector will be two all 2 power p vectors so that means 2 power 2 test vector that means 4 test vector they are 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 case 2 minimal test of all power what is case 2 p is equal to w plus 1 there we will have 2 power p minus 1 pattern so we will take example today this one we will discuss particularly this one and case 3 where p is greater than w plus 1 here test pattern consists two or more subsets and each of which contain all possible pattern of p bits having a specific constant weight suppose p equal to 5 w3 then belong this is the second p greater than 5 and w3 so second row we have to refer this table so this table we should remember or it should be provided then only we can derive the number of and uh, we can decide the number of test vectors so here p is greater than 4 and w3 that is the second row so in that the constant weight will be 1 comma p minus 1 that means constant weight will be 1 minus 5 minus 1 4 so you will have two subsets one is weight of 1 another one is weight of 4 so total number of this will be 10 so today's tutorial we are going to see an example for the case 2 there p equal to w plus 1 
and we will see different uh, test vector generator circuits hardware wise how we can generate the test vector that we are going to see in that we will study first syndrome driver counter and constant weight to these two circuits we will observe in this tutorial so find the reduced number of test vector this is the example for the previous pseudo exhaustive testing generator so there we have taken this example in this it has a b c d e f g inputs and five outputs and each output is function of this a b e b c g like this so first we have to write a dependence matrix in that you write inputs as column variable that is a b c d e and outputs as row variables now you see f1 is a function of a b e so in this first row f1 in this first row we will put 1 against a b and e other all zero similarly write all outputs for example f5 it is c e f for oh, here one missing this c should be 1 this should be 1 and e and f okay mm. Mm. Sorry, here uh, mistake is is F5 does not have this C. It is a function of only E and F. That's why it is written E and F only. So C is not there. So this is wrong. This C is not there. Only E and F. So F5 you will get E and F only. Now you have to partition this matrix into different partition different groups such that in each partition, any row if you take the total number of ones should not exceed one. So we can have many possible partition so you can do trial and error and find a solution where you will have maximum number of minimum number of partition so that you can group you can club many columns into a partic particular partition so i have tried all so you may have other solution also i think maximum option is minimum possible par partition is four you can't reduce less than that so four partition is required so in that I have grouped A and C. So you see A and C, the number of ones in any row here does not exceed 1. Similarly BD, nowhere exceeds. E, nowhere exceeds. And FG. So you can also try other possibilities. I think it is man a minimum number you can have only 4. You can't reduce below that. 4, 4 you need. So then what you do, you or each you consider a partition and or each columns that is 1 or 0 that is 1 0 or 1 1 1 last one 0 or 0 so that one uh, here this should be 0 this should be 0 this should be 0 because 0 or 0 is 0 this is wrong this should be 0 similarly bd 1 x or 0 1 1 1 1 and last 0 and here it is as it is last one again or these two 0 or 0 1 1 last will be 1 so this should be 0 this should be 0 now if you count number of partition 4 partition so p will be 4 and maximum number of ones in any any row if you take you can see that maximum number of one you can have only 3 not more than that so p w equal to 3 so p equal to w plus 1 this is the case 2 so here you have to decide whether you have to take odd or even any you can choose so if you choose odd parity so odd parity means total number of bits in the p is 4 p is 4 so test vector will have four inputs but less than four what are the odd numbers you have one and three so you can have parity one and parity three so this is odd parity since you have chosen it is parity 1 and parity 3. Parity 1 means total number of 1s is only 1. Here total of number of 1s is 3. It is a parity 3. So finally the test vector will have 4 inputs. And total number of combination will be 4 plus 4, 8. So that is 2 power w. Just uh, let me check here. See total number of test pattern will be 2 power w. Here P equal to 4, W equal to 3. So 2 power 3 number of test vectors. So 8 test vectors. Though 4 inputs you have, 
will get only 8 test vector. Now coming back to test, gen test vector generator circuits, we have 4 types. Syndrome driver, constant weight counter, LFSR, linear feedback shift register and LFSR XOR. So today we will see syndrome driver counter. So what is this test vector generator circuit? So, so far we discussed how many test vectors required. Now we will see how we can generate those test vectors. So in that, if this consider this one syndrome driver counter, if P that is less than any inputs of the circuit under test can share the same test values with the remaining n minus p inputs then circuit can be exhaustively tested with 2 power p inputs so consider this example 4 inputs a b c d and you have 3 output y1 is a d y2 is a c y3 is b c now if you see no output is a function of both c and d see that any output if you see is it a function of both c and d no c d are not there in any single output Similarly, A and B also you will not find. So, what does this tell? You can club A, B together and C, D together. So, instead of using four sources of signal, you can use only two sources of signal that is X1 and X2. So, then you consider Y1 now. Can you exhaustively test Y1? Yes, Y1 is a function of A and D. So you can see A is given by the first source, D is given by the second source. So since you are going to use all possible test vector of X1 and X2, you can exhaustively test to Y1. Next consider Y2, it is A and C. A is given by X1, C is given by X2. Two different sources are there, four test vector you can exhaustively test. BC, Y3 is a combination of BC. So B is generated by X1, C is generated by X2. Again you can exhaustively test this is how we can reduce number of test vector and next one is constant weight counter so it uses x out of y code for exhaustively testing an m input where x is maximum number of input variables on which any output of the circuit under test depend and value of y is chosen that all 2 power x input combinations are available from any m column of the exit code uh, codes words we will take an example then we will understand what it is so this is a typical example we have 4 inputs a b c d and we have 4 outputs y1 y2 y3 y4 and you see that any output you take it is a maximum it will depend on 2 input variable so in this x will be 2 here any output you take the maximum number of inputs it depend on only 2 so we will write 2 and y equal to 4 because there are 4 outputs so it gives you can have a 2 out of 4 code such that that is a b c d 4 input but no need to produce all the 16 combination you two only produce only 2 out of 4 codes so what happens then so for 2 out of 4 means any combination you take in that number of ones should be 2 so this also 2 this also 2 this also 2 2 now what what is the main thing here any two column you take and you see all the possible combination of two input variable is generated or not what does it mean you take a b only consider a b now a b what are the combination you have 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 so all the possible combination of 2 vector that is 2 power 2 4 they are available in the a b similarly b c you take 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 so all the 4 combination of 2 input variable is present similarly c d or any 2 column you take why we are doing this because output is maximum function of 2 so if you take any two column or if you take any two uh, signals here any two columns all possible combination must be present so that we have here all so that exhaustively we can test y4 y3 y2 and y1 okay so that's all about this tutorial